Hello and welcome to my talk on HPIRL, 3 human pace estimation using RGB and LiDAR. In this paper, we apply LiDAR and RGB fusion to pose estimation to improve the precision significantly. My name is Michael Fürst and I am from the Augmented Vision Department at DFKI, the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. Now let's dive into it. So, human pace estimation is the task of predicting joint positions of a person. On the right hand side, you can see the joints our approach predicts as the yellow circles. The lines connecting the joints are just for easier visualizations and are not part of the network output. Generally, there are two approaches. First, bottom-up. There the joint positions are predicted first and then they are connected from the skeleton to a person. Second, top-down. In this approach, a 2D bounding box around the person is detected first the 2D box depicted by the orange box on the right. Then the joint positions of this person are estimated. Since it is already known that the joints belong to a single person, no connection of joints is required as this is known for a single person. lcr -Net, depicted in the bottom, is a top-down approach. It first has an encoder producing features from RGB image, followed by an RPN which predicts the 2D boxes. Then, finally, a post predictor estimates the joint positions of the skeleton. However, RGB only 3D approaches suffer from depth ambiguity. This is the case when there is two persons of different size at different distances in the scene, blue and orange in the image. When projecting both persons onto the image plane, they appear identical albeit having a different distance from the camera. With environmental cues, the network can somewhat compensate this issue, but it still significantly impacts performance. And therefore, in 3D object detection, most of the top approaches on Kitty are based on RGB LiDAR fusion. None of the top approaches relies only on RGB. So here, we use AWOT as a reference fusion schema. AWOT first applies an encoder on LiDAR and RGB images separately. then. The features are ROI pooled and combined, since the RPN only can work with one set of features. The RPN predicts 3D boxes, which are used to ROI pool the features again for the second stage. The second stage then predicts deltas to the 3D boxes and the outputs the 3D box in a process that's often called refinement. In our approach, we first have an AWOT-like feature extractor. This means that we employ encoders on RGB and LiDAR separately, RI align them, and fuse them with an average operation. We then apply 3D region proposal network to obtain 3D proposals. Using these proposals, we RI align again and fuse again to obtain the features for the second stage. Then the second stage predicts those deltas, which are added onto the anchor poses which are placed in the scene using the 3D centers of the 3D box proposals. This allows for non-root relative prediction specifically useful in the autonomous driving domain. Finally, a scoring layer scores the anchor poses. The scoring is trained by using the anchor, which best fits the ground truth pose as the target. We did various evaluations. But here we'll focus only on one of them, the comparison of RGB only versus our HPOL fusion approach on the PEDEX dataset. And we can see that our HPOL approach outperforms the RGB baseline, essentially attuned LCRNet, by 48% error reduction on the 2D MPJPE metric, and improved the PCKH by 8%. On the 3D metric, when regarding the depth error, measured with the center distance error, you can see a reduction of 81%. And for the XY error, a reduction of 73% can be observed. Here we see what those numbers mean. We can clearly see that the precision of the HPOL approach is far superior to RGB-only approaches. While in the RB RGB image in the bottom, there is only a small difference we can see that in the 3D, errors are significant. This illustrates the depth ambiguity problem of RGB-only 3D pose estimators. So in conclusion, HPRL has a high localization precision due to the LiDAR, 
And the elevated position of the LiDAR furthermore helps with occlusion cases, as can be seen on the right hand side. And furthermore, with the evaluation, we were able to see that LiDAR also improves the joint estimation in 2D metrics for more precise poses. However, this comes at a cost, and the cost is that LiDAR sensors cost more, more compared to traditional cameras. And also slowing down research in this direction currently is the lack of data sets. So we have shown the PEDEX data set as an evaluation, as this is the only public data set available. And with that, thank you for your attention. And here are the references. Have a nice day.